How do cadence and stride length change during a race with world-class runners? This and much, much more you will learn in today's episode. Hello and welcome. My name is Frederik Zelen and I'm your running technique specialist. Let's start with the question. If you want to run faster, should you increase your stride length or should you increase your cadence? Do you think you know the answer? Think about it some more. Increase stride length or cadence. And the answer is... Well, both. And that's all for today. Well, that was the short answer. Here is the long version of it. There are only two ways to increase your pace when you run. You can maintain your stride length and increase the cadence, or you can maintain the cadence and increase your stride length. You can, of course, increase both stride length and cadence, but there are no other ways to increase your speed. Cadence and stride length. And that can be good to know, so you know what to train. If you want to increase stride length, you need more strength and elasticity with, for example, you get from strength training, of course, hill sprints, plyometrics. And to reduce the risk of a low cadence, it's good if you have your running technique in order, of course, because as I said in the video called don't change the cadence by changing the cadence when you run. Just try to take more steps per minute, increasing the cadence without changing the angles of the joints and how you move is doomed to failure. Then it just becomes forced and unnatural and really, really hard. By doing really fast intervals, you can also improve your ability to move your body parts quicker. As a rule, runner increase speed by increasing both stride length and cadence. Although some runners increase the cadence more while others get a stronger push-off and instead increase the stride length more. But almost always both things are changed. But instead of talking about theory, let's take a real-life example with figures from a study by the organization World Athletics. Let's look at the final of the men's 10,000 meters at the 2017 World Championships. When you run 10,000 meters, you run 25 laps on the track. Here are some numbers from lap 15. The first thing we can note is that there is quite a difference in terms of their cadence from 171 to 206. And this means that you have now a new argument to use when your running mates say that 180 steps per minute is the optimal cadence for all runners at all paces. If that were the case, everyone in this World Championship final should have a cadence of 180 and maintain it all the time. But that is not the case, of course. To the surprise of absolutely no one, except those who are members of the Church of 100 Steps per Minute, of course. Now, let's take a look at the numbers for the winner of the race, Sir Mo Farah. He is known to usually have a slightly lower cadence than the other runners in the championships. As you can see, on lap 15, his cadence is 173.4. You remember that I said that one way to run faster is to have a higher cadence. But if a higher cadence means higher speed, then Mochiri with a cadence of 206 should run faster than Sir Mo. Therefore, we also look at their stride length. Mo Farah simply has a longer stride length than Mochiri, getting further with each step he takes. The lower cadence probably means he moves his center of mass a bit more up and down, which costs extra energy compared to Mochiri. But the extra movement can contribute to a slightly more powerful push-off and more elastic recoil from the stretch shortening cycle. The improved energy return can then pay for the increased up and down movement. And since Farah is the winner of this race and Muchiri will not be on the podium, Mo Farah's running style with arguably greater vertical displacement of his central mass can still pay off. 
What is best suited depends on, for example, what type of muscle fibers you have and some other things that I will not mention right now because then this video will be very very long. If you are tall, you are probably taking longer steps than shorter runners. Then one can ask if Mo Farah just is much taller than Machiri, who has the highest cadence and therefore takes the shortest steps. So then we look at the relative step length. That is how long steps they take in relation to their body length. It shows that Mo Farah takes the longest steps in relation to his height and Muchiri takes the shortest steps in relation to his body length. And this means that the body constitution that Farah and Muchiri have differ where Farah is more explosive and works more with his elasticity for the simple reason that he probably has more of it than Muchiri. And speaking of Mo Farah, it may be that my life as a running coach on social media peaked the day Sir Mo liked one of my posts on Instagram. I just wanted to mention that he did that. We can now also follow Mo Farah's cadence and see how clearly it follows his pace. His cadence is in the golden yellow boxes here on this picture. These are the numbers for the three medalists and the higher up a box is, the faster the pace. On lap 5, Farah has a cadence of 175.8. On lap 10, he runs at a faster pace than Cheptegei and Tanui. His dot is higher than theirs and his cadence is 185. On lap 15, his speed drops to the lowest of the measurement that is taken and he has gotten 173.4. The last lap of the race is of course the fastest because now everyone's sprinting for the medals. And even though Mo Farah is known to have a rather low cadence, here it's about 200 steps per minute. So there's a difference of about 27 steps per minute in Mo Farah's cadence during the same race mainly due to his pace. The same is true for the runner-up, Chep de Gay, who now holds the world record for both 5,000 and 10,000 meters, well at least when I'm recording this. And even for him, the difference is 27 steps per minute. But for Tanui, the bronze medalist, the difference is smaller, although he is also well above 200 strides per minute in the final lap. But wait a minute! Was it the case that the best runner at this world championship changed their cadence a lot during the race? Yes it was! Again, all running gurus on social media, please tell us one more time how 180 steps per minute is optimal for all runners at all paces. Why not take a look at what reality looks like instead of coming up with homemade theories and launching them as absolute truths? The three medalists at this world championship have a cadence ranging from 173 to 207 and their cadence varies a lot throughout the race. <sighs> so now my little tantrum is over. But like I said, feel free to send this video to your friends at the church of 180 steps per minute. In the text below I also add some links to other videos I've made about cadence. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next tantrum. I mean my highly professional videos. And don't miss the words of wisdom for runners coming up. Take care, I'll see you again soon in another video.
I really hope you liked that video and if you did you please click the like button and maybe also the subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos here on my channel and if you are interested in my online course you find all the information about that one in the description below